Hey guys, it's Tom Cherry Holmes with another Retro Computing Archaeology series. In this particular video, I'm going to show how I recreated the UA571C Remote Gun Sentry program as a way to test the development environment that I have been res resurrecting for uh, the grid compass and grid case machines. I won't go into too much detail. In fact, I probably won't go into any detail about GRID itself in this video. That's actually for a future video. But I wanted to actually take and show the program in action. But first, a tiny little bit of background. As I was putting together the development environment, things kept going back through the back of my mind. How was I going to take and test the development environment to make sure that it actually worked as expected? Then. I thought about this particular scene from the movie Aliens, directed by James Cameron. Here you literally see two grid compass machines uh, that were provided by grid to take and provide a display for a remote sentry weapon, as you can see firing right there. Uh, and they actually wrote a whole program written in grid basic to uh, do this graphical display here. One of the nice things about the electroluminescent display, uh, especially with regards to the way it refreshed, it was very easy to synchronize to, and thus you didn't see any flickering if you tried to take and film it. It was a very nice display for the time here. But you can see uh, they're firing, the weapon eventually runs out, etc. This particular scene didn't make it to the final cut, but some of us actually saw it either in test screenings or later with the director's cut. So I got to thinking, okay, why don't we take, since this program was never actually released, but now we have the development environment that they used to create it, why not recreate it? Now, while I can't run grid basic uh, on the grid case, I can actually recreate the whole dang thing in Pascal using the same toolkit routines, and that's exactly what I did. A little bit of difference here, and I'm putting this picture up for viewing reference here. This is a grid compass, the machine that they used on the movie. Uh, it uses a thin film electroluminescent panel uh, with a 320 by 240 resolution. So you see the panel actually takes up the center of the, uh, of the display panel. So it's not taking the full size. This is in stark contrast to my grid case 1530 here, in which the, uh, not only is the horizontal resolution increased from 320 to 640, therefore twice as long, but we also have increased the resolution for the vertical from 240 pixels to 400, so almost a doubling in that direction as well. Also, the big difference here is that this particular grid case uses a um, gas plasma display. Now, how am, I going to, how, how am I going to get this to work, seeing as the Compass used the grid OS, or Compass Computer Operating System, CCOS, and the grid cases normally use MS-DOS? As it happens, Grid actually sold a product in the mid-1980s, which they called Integrid, which brought CCOS over into the MS-DOS world. We'll get into it by typing Grid. Wait for my hard drive to spin up because it spun down here. You'll see that from the moment in, we are now in the CCOS environment. We're now sitting at the executive and it's asking us to select a file. Now we'll go ahead and just to start off here, we'll take and demonstrate the program. Go into my docs directory here and down here at the bottom is my work folder containing the development environment, development logs, and all the source code for this application. I will be taking and releasing all of this on GitHub. But let's run the program. Now you'll see, here we go, we have a selection screen here to set all sorts of weapons, information, arrow keys, take and select the appropriate selection panel. We can go ahead and bring things into a, into a good state here. And then when we're ready, we can confirm the selections. 
and go directly into the firing here. Press confirm to fire. And you'll see here counting down with the meters going up. Burning through those rounds as quickly as we possibly can. And we're about to, when we hit 100, we'll hit critical. And now we're out of bullets. Oh darn. This is an action, this is a grid application. So I can basically also take and horizontally split, for example. Go down. It changed my fonts here, so yeah, it's using the big fonts at the moment. Uh, we'll take and go, <laughs> and we'll just pull something up. Sure, why not? And you'll see that the other application is just is running just fine, bouncing right along, no big deal. And we'll just take and go back up. See the dotted line change? And we can go back to the options screen, code O, change options, okay. And when we fire again, we can go back and we can fire again. So, I mean, there you go. It works and if all you came here to see was just the demonstration of the program running here, uh, you can be done. I'll take a few more minutes here just to kind of walk through a bit of the program and how it's all laid out and how it's built in the context of the development environment. Okay, so we'll go ahead and we're done with you, so I'll quit you and put you away. Now we will go back to, let's see, docs D. The GitHub will have all the bits and pieces that you need to build this, including the complete integrated environment with all of the compilers, the libraries, and the includes that are needed to actually make this work. So you can build this yourself, or you can take uh, and put this on an MS-DOS machine and run this completely self-contained as well. But to start off with, we'll actually go into the grid develop by opening up the development file. And we'll see if we take a look, I'll go ahead and go into the transfer window and open up the development file. GridWrite is used in the context of grid applications to write all the software. And this is, for those of you who are software developers, this is equivalent to a make file. We have some global parameters up here. We have the list of source files here, which you can see are a smattering of either Pascal, some include files, and finally the link step to call the linker to bring all the objects together into a runnable run file, along with a segment size, which is required when we're taking and building the final file. And finally, a test, uh, a test function to be able to just run the application, and interestingly enough, a uh, make file entry for a log file which you we which can be used to jot down uh, things like change log entries all in all a very uh, an excellent de development environment for 1983 1984 it uh, multitasks very well and you can have multiple with the multiple windows on the screen and whatnot it really comes together as a very usable in development environment Go ahead and confirm and look at some of the files here, for example, the main file here. And besides some Intel specific bits or includes, it's pretty much standard Pascal. Code Q, quit, move on to something else. Confirm. And let's look at, for example, the firing panel. Again, much the same thing for the includes, but you have 
The interesting thing about Intel Pascal is that it has a concept of module encapsulation. So you do have some bits of object orientation. You can keep bits and pieces of code separate and only expose the bits and pieces in public to other parts to other parts of the compiler. See, I had to take and write some additional window functions uh, to take and draw rectangles. Things to put characters on the screen, draw lines. And the bits and pieces to show the critical here, which is literally just the clever use of win invert rectangle to take and paint uh, successively paint black and white rectangular areas inside each other to recreate the critical text. Functions to, yeah, functions to set critical, to set rounds. Some of the interesting things that I had to do here, the, uh, the different functions uh, didn't have any uh, provision for uh, zero padding or space padding of numerical strings, so I kind of had to put something together very quickly here. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, because large parts of the environment are written in PLM, um, there are data types that Grid uses throughout various common functions to be able to pass data to and from the PLM specific portions of the code. So, I mean, that gives you kind of an idea here of what it's like at least to edit code inside the system. And there are lots of other interesting niceties as well. So for example, if you want more text on the screen, we can just as easily take and change the, the uh, font that we use here. I'll change it to five by eight. And suddenly we have a lot more space on screen for text and so on. Code Q to quit. Confirm it, sure. And once we're done, we can take and compile various parts of it. We can either choose to do the compiles and links by themselves, or you can do a compile followed by a link. So we can basically go ahead, come in, confirm, and then we specify which pieces we want to actually be able to compile by changing the elements on this panel. We'll take and compile file of fire and menu here and leave everything else as it is. At which point it will take and call Intel's development tools. And that's a big thing here too. You'll notice that Grid's uh, name has a lowercase i. This is actually a big nod to Intel because Grid used huge swaths, not only of Intel's hardware, the bubble memory, the processor, the support chips, they also used uh, lots of Intel software, namely uh, the compilers and even the nucleus to the IRMX operating system, which forms the basis of CCOS. So we there we've taken and compiled it. We can also take and link if we wish. And that just calls the linker to take and build out the final file. Good. And finally, we can just test the result. We'll code F to go right into the firing panel. And so on. Now, because uh, the original, again, I have to point out that because the original display, as you can see right here, the original display is much smaller than the one I'm using on my grid case, a little, some things got stretched out a little bit. And I'm only using the first 200 lines here, so that basically means also that you can multitask. And multitasking is easy enough. We can take and horizontally split. We can go down, pick something else, anything else at all. I mean, I, I, like, choosing the, I like choosing the spreadsheets because it, uh, gives, it gives us a nice little graph to look at. And you can see right there, bam, as it's doing that, great. We're able to take and zoom in, zoom out, and because I'm properly implementing the redraws here, uh, the Sentry will take and redraw the display as needed. 
So I think I'm going to end the video here, but I wanted to kind of just show you guys that uh, the development environment does indeed work. I used it to take and recreate the uh, remote sentry weapon system display from aliens here. That works really well. And I will be putting all of this up on GitHub. So uh, until next time, guys. Have fun.